We can't help but think that these guys just chose the wrong team. Calvin Ridley, last contract he's probably going to sign mm -hmm. in his NFL career, probably could have signed with a quote-unquote better team, Kansas City. High-profile NFL free agent signings carry plenty of red flags for us. With that said, let's dive into 10 NFL free agents who screwed up by signing with the wrong team and who they should have joined instead. Calvin Ridley, Kansas City Chiefs Ridley signed a four-year deal with the Tennessee Titans worth $92 million. More than half of it, $50 million to be exact, is guaranteed. Hey, good on Ridley for getting paid and all, but uh, why did he just devote the remainder of his prime years to a rebuilding Titans team? Even if he puts up his usual numbers, Ridley isn't going to compete for a championship in the Music City. Even if Will Levis takes that next step forward, the Titans have completely reshaped their offensive line and defense. They're still the worst team in the AFC South and nowhere close to challenging with top AFC heavyweights like the Kansas City Chiefs, Baltimore Ravens, Cincinnati Bengals, or Buffalo Bills. If you're Ridley, why not take a little less money and join the defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs? Ridley would have immediately stepped in as Casey's number one receiver while getting the chance to compete for rings. He could have even signed a short-term deal with Kansas City, have a career year, then set himself up for a giant payday next year. We've just seen this too many times before, the star wide out chasing the money instead of trying to win with an elite QB. Mike Wallace, Kenny Galladay, Greg Jennings, and Devontae Adams? Yeah, just a few names that come to mind there. Josh Jacobs, Los Angeles Chargers We like Josh Jacobs' deal with Green Bay from a Packers standpoint, but it's difficult to comprehend what exactly Jacobs was doing here. His four-year deal worth $48 million is basically just a one-year deal with three team options. So if Jacobs gets injured and or doesn't produce in Titletown, he'll just have cost himself a lot of money in 2025 free agency. The Packers also brought back AJ Dillon on a one-year deal, meaning that Jacobs isn't going to be the bell cow running back that we saw in Las Vegas. So that means he faces long odds of playing at a high enough level to secure more money long-term beyond next year. In terms of money and a schematic fit, we can't help but wonder why Jacobs didn't land with the Los Angeles Chargers. Jim Harbaugh's squad lost Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, and lead running back Austin Eckler. Jacobs could have been an absolute rock star in a Justin Herbert-led offense. He could have gotten a nice long-term payday there and the chance to put together career numbers with one of the game's most elite QBs. And from an entertainment standpoint, the dude would be playing against his old Raiders squad twice a year. But an underwhelming one-year deal to be one half of a strong running back tandem in Green Bay? Sure, whatever floats your boat, Josh. Jadavian Clowney, Buffalo Bills Clowney had a superb bounce back year in his lone season with the Ravens, racking up 9.5 sacks, matching a career high to go along with 5 pass defenses and 2 forced fumbles. And yet, Clowney waited it out for a little bit in free agency, as he always does, before signing a 2 year deal with the Carolina Panthers worth $20 million. Now someone, please, please make it make sense. Clowney is joining a horrible Carolina team that just finished as football's worst team with a 2-15 record. They lost top pass rushers Brian Burns and Frankie Louvu, plus the reliable Yudogos Matos. Who the heck's gonna help Clowney get after the QB now? Why did Clowney take a discount too? Why is he joining a team that won't compete for a championship anytime soon? Clowney going to Buffalo would have made perfect sense. They lost plenty of key pieces because of the salary cap, but a one-year deal would have allowed Clowney to compete for a championship while potentially securing a better payout next year. Even if he plays like a pro bowler in Carolina, it won't matter. The Panthers aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Clowney should have gone ring chasing on a team that would allow him to bolster his own market for 2000 25 free agency. Oh well, we suppose the Panthers can always trade Clowney one day. Aaron Jones, Dallas Cowboys. With Josh Jacobs on his way to title town, Aaron Jones became expendable and was released by the Packers. He waited just one day before finding his new home, settling on a one year deal with the rival Minnesota Vikings worth $7 million. Look, Jones will definitely be an upgrade over the running backs Minnesota used last year. We wouldn't at all be shocked if he had another 1,000 yard season. But someone please tell us why this deal makes sense for Jones. You'll be 30 by the end of 2024, and certainly cannot expect another lucrative payday next year. Jones is joining a retooling Minnesota team that just lost Pro Bowl quarterback Kirk Cousins to free agency. Why didn't he wait it out a bit more and try to negotiate more money for himself with a contending team, no less? The Dallas Cowboys were said to have interest in Jones after losing top
top RB Tony Pollard to Tennessee. Why didn't the former UTEP star go to Dallas? He'd be on a playoff contender, running behind one of the best offensive lines in football. A healthy Jones would have rushed for well over 1K yards behind the Dallas O-line, guaranteed. But choosing to join a non-contending Minnesota team for only one season was quite the decision. Seeing where Jones is at this stage of his career, does anybody else feel like Jones signed quickly with Minnesota for the simple purpose of trying to stick it to his old team? Gabe Davis, Detroit Lions. Big game Gabe never fully broke out for the Buffalo Bills, despite showing flashes of future stardom in the 2021 season. A fresh start was necessary for Davis, but we don't think the Jacksonville Jaguars are the place for him. Having lost Calvin Ridley to Tennessee, the Jaguars signed Davis to a three-year deal worth $39 million. Now, is it just us, or is that a lot of money for a guy who hasn't hit the 50-catch nor 900-yard marks? Davis couldn't break out with Stefan Diggs as the only superior offensive weapon on that Bills offense. Now he joins the Jaguars team with three more valuable playmakers in Christian Kirk, Evan Ingram, and Travis Etienne Jr. Davis got paid and heads to a state with no personal income tax. Hey, that's pretty nice. But where are the targets coming from now? He's going from Josh Allen's number two pass catcher to Trevor Lawrence's fourth weapon. Davis should have waited it out a bit and tried his luck with the Detroit Lions, who lost veteran standout Josh Reynolds in free agency. The 2024th round pick could have stepped in as Jared Goff's number two or three pass catcher behind Amon Ross St. Brown and Sam Laporta. Davis would be playing for a bona fide Super Bowl contender. His speed and game-breaking abilities could have added another explosive element to the Detroit offense. But alas, I suppose we won't be seeing that anytime soon. Tony Pollard, Arizona Cardinals. Having hit 1K rushing for the second straight year, Pollard secured a three-year deal with the Titans worth $24 million. I mean, on paper, he seems like a fine replacement for the departed Derrick Henry, right? Uh, we're not super sold. Henry is a yards after contact beast. Pollard isn't. So the Titans really downgraded at RB here. Pollard is joining a leaky Titans O-line that finished 16th in ESPN's run-blocking win rate for the 2023 season. It's just tough to see how he'll retain his star-like form on a rebuilding Tennessee franchise. Now, what if Pollard joined forces with Kyler Murray in Arizona? The Cardinals, by the way, finished 6th in ESPN's run-blocking win rate. And with more offensive weaponry coming in through the draft, I mean, heck, Marvin Harrison Jr., anyone? Arizona would have been the perfect place for Pollard to continue his dominance. Instead, he's taken a calculated risk by joining a rebuilding Tennessee team that cannot guarantee him individual success. Bobby Wagner, Dallas Cowboys. You can understand Wagner's wish to reunite with ex-Seahawks and new Commanders head coach Dan Quinn. Those two reached two Super Bowls together, winning it all in the 2013 season. But we do ask this, why is the future Hall of Famer going to a rebuilding Washington team with his Hall of Fame career winding down? A one-year deal worth $6 million in guarantees with only a max value of $8.5 million. Wagner just earned his ninth Pro Bowl nod and finished with his superb 2023 Pro Football Focus grade of 82.3. He's still elite, and yet the Seahawks legend wants to play on a team that ain't sniffing the postseason next year. Why is that? Wagner would have been able to compete on a Dallas team that lost Quinn and several key cogs on defense, including Dorrance Armstrong and Leighton Vander Esch. Wagner and Micah Parsons could have been a dream linebacker pairing, and maybe the former makes enough of a difference to help Dallas go on a playoff run. Patrick Queen, Seattle Seahawks. This was one of the biggest surprises of 2024 free agency. The ex-Baltimore Ravens pro bowler joined the arch-rival Pittsburgh Steelers on a three-year contract worth $41 million. Queen earned his first career pro bowl nod in the final year of his rookie deal. So on paper, why wouldn't he chase the money and fly to Pittsburgh? This felt like an overpay for an off-ball linebacker, and we're not quite sure how much Queen will shine as a pass rusher with TJ Watt, Alex Highsmith, and Cameron Hayward already patrolling the front seven. Queen has been a liability in pass coverage throughout his career, so he's gonna have to flourish as a pass rusher to justify this contract. Looking back, why didn't he just follow Mike McDonald to Seattle? Queen played his best football under McDonald during the latter's two-year stint as the Ravens' defensive coordinator. After the Seahawks hired McDonald to be their new head coach, it just made perfect sense for Queen to reunite with him there. Bobby Wagner's departure further stressed the Hawks' need for a linebacker, and Queen would have just been the ideal solution there. Austin Eckler, Las Vegas Raiders After a down final season with the Los Angeles Chargers, Eckler accepted a modest two-year deal with the Washington Commanders worth a max value of $11.43 million. Though he'll be 29 years of age next season, Eckler still has plenty of football left in him. So it was a bit surprising to see him take a rather cheap contract on a rebuilding Washington team. We like the work thus far by new Commanders GM Adam Peters, but why is Eckler going to a team that won't contend for Super Bowls anytime soon? When, you know, Eckler himself is nearing the very end of his 
his prime years. Eckler is going to have to share the ball with Brian Robinson Jr., Terry McLaurin, and Jahan Dotson. If Washington takes Jaden Daniels with the number two pick, the Heisman Trophy winner will take up a lot of carries that would otherwise go to Eckler. We just can't help but wonder why Eckler didn't play matchmaker with, I don't know, the Raiders. They lost RB1 Josh Jacobs and are turning to Zamir White. He of 121 career carries to lead the backfield. Eckler could have been a difference maker on a Raiders offense led by Devontae Adams and Jacoby Myers. He would have been a big time touchdown machine and valuable weapon out of the backfield for Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew. And hey, Nevada is a no personal income tax state. So that means more money for Eckler. This really feels like a missed opportunity for both Eckler and the Raiders here. Instead, we'll just watch him likely decline considerably in DC. How fun. Chase Young, Baltimore Ravens. The number two pick of the 2020 NFL Draft had an uneven 2023 season that was split with the Washington Commanders and San Francisco 49ers. After tallying five sacks in seven games with Washington, Young was sent to the 49ers ahead of the trade deadline. He had 2.5 sacks in nine games and was also largely a non-factor in the postseason, with only one sack in three games. Young settled on a one-year deal with the New Orleans Saints worth a fully guaranteed $13 million. That is a generous payday for a player with Young's injury history and lack of consistent production. So I good on him for securing the bag. But you know, doesn't mean it's a good fit. For Young, the idea here is obviously to try and reset his market value for a better payout in 2020. 25. If Young wanted to do that, he should have looked for a Super Bowl contending team as a landing spot. You know, maybe one with a better schematic fit. Realistically, how much will Young produce on the Saints defense with the ageless Cameron Jordan, 2023 breakout Carl Granderson, veteran Demario Davis, and promising youngster Brian Brisey? The Ravens have a long history of finding successful reclamation projects, with Jadavian Clowney and Justin Houston serving as recent examples. The AFC runner-ups would have been the perfect fit for Young, who could a. Compete for a Super Bowl, while B. Entering a situation that would fully maximize his skill set and potential. It's just hard to see how New Orleans is going to be the place for Young to rebound after another frustrating year. But which other NFL free agents screwed up and where do you think they should have signed? Let us know in the comment section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.